Oh, hey y'all, how's it going? Fatty here, and today I am bringing you the top three unrateable Crystal Isles rat holes with build guides, and let's not waste any more of your time and jump straight into it. So this is done with official build settings, so if you're an official player, this is going to be perfect for you. You can use this to kind of almost mimic completely, and if you're an unofficial player that has collision unenabled, you're going to have just so many more options with this one. So this first one is going to be located at 39.7. 66.5 it is going to be located at the very edge of the floating islands next to like the pink trees kind of area this one's going to have this little lake above it which makes it a little easier to see and then when you come down below it's going to be this just kind of flat area with these two different little areas that you can kind of build on i always like to put the generator in one corner and um yeah i'll kind of build this up and kind of talk about it so anytime I'm building, these first two steps are optional. I always like to clear off anything that's going to LOS turrets. If you're not the phase where you're going to actually be putting up turrets, maybe just leave these rocks up to kind of start out with. That way it hides your base a little bit. But if you actually are trying to, you know, put up turrets, get them out of there so people can not easily rocket run you or just use them for cover in any way. Next is always best to do the generator. I always like to do the generator with the, the cords and all that stuff going underneath the foundations. And if you're building on official, if you don't do this step first, then it's going to say it's obstructed and you have to put it above and it's really nasty and ugly. So make sure you put it down first because you can always put foundations on top of cables, but you can't put cables on there. Then from there, I always like to just kind of try to figure out where I'm going to be putting down some foundations. So I always usually start at the front, put it near the back and then near the back, you know, if it doesn't quite square up right, then you just kind of have to fill in the gaps. However, definitely get a lot of triangle foundations. They are one of the best things that ARC ever added. But when you're doing this, especially on this one, make sure people can't like sneak up through where your triangle foundations are, because then that's just a huge LOS problem again. So, you know, you might have to pick it up, kind of mess with it, really get it kind of fine tuned. And then instead of putting it, you know, foundations right up against it, put it in different areas just to kind of help block off things. And then you can also use it in different areas from there. And then back in this corner, always make sure you cover your junction boxes. I did make a little bit of a mistake right here. I should have covered up that junction box because if someone could get a flame arrow or something there, they could destroy the junction box and then it would just kind of be game over. Also use multiple junction boxes. So from here, I put the fabricator kind of against this wall, just barely enough to leave a little gap here so I can kind of tuck a smithy back here as well. But definitely make sure you can get back here to fill your turn or your generator with gas, because if you can't do that, then what's the point, right? Um, also, another little building tip, I'm sure most of you know this, but if you don't, the smithy always has this like weird thing in the front where it doesn't want to push up against the wall. So I always put my back up against the wall and jump up. And it's the easiest way to get a smithy up against a wall. If you already have like a natural wall, like the rock here, or if you already put up a wall, like in a base, then foundations are always an optional one. I usually just find a good spot for metal and then put my foundations out there. I will usually keep one or two in the base just to get started. So I have it really close. But more like fire and light always draws attention and it just takes up a lot of space. Then from here, since it is a rat hole, I always like to give myself some cover. So the best way I thought to give cover in this one was definitely just put a vault. You can always tuck some beds behind here then. So if you are, you know, fighting and you're PvPing, you can always spawn up and you're behind that. So if they do have a sniper, they're not just going to clearly like line of sight you. You can always put up some walls and stuff besides that before you put up like the turret wall and stuff it's completely optional i've seen it done both ways i'm honestly more of a fan of the open way it is a little bit harder when people are pvping you but if you kind of know what you're doing you should be fine then from here you don't want to go too far out but you want to go far out enough that you can kind of see around that right edge a little bit so no one can kind of come up and start to get established on that ledge it's a lot harder than if they can't get established on the ledge that they have to kind of like walk up or throw some stuff. Anything that is close has a direct line of sight for the turrets to hit everything. And then also, once you do that, then you just want to, you know, put the pillars up. I always like to do kind of the classic turret wall, right? One kind of ceiling and then you put a hatch frame from that and then you put some of the turrets up. Um, from here, I don't know what was going on with this pillar. It just was kind of saying it was obstructed anything from there, even though it was like the biggest area. But just because of how this like little turret wall is going to work out anyways, it's not a huge deal. You can always try to build that out a little bit differently when you have the chance to do it. But like I said, this is official, so I'm also not an official player. So it took me a little bit longer to mess with it. But once it's all said and done, then you have something that kind of looks like this. Make sure you have all your turrets on. But that should give you a lot of clear line of sights. Over here where these rocks are, you could always break that down and put a pillbox or something like that. Again, just to keep people off that ledge. 
when you do that you're going to invite yourself to some more pvp but yeah this makes this one a pretty good little rat hole just to get started again it's also in crystal isles which is one of the best maps to get started and let's go on to the next spot Real quick before we get to those last two locations, if you guys want to support the channel, the best way to do it, besides watching, liking, commenting, and subscribing, is I do run a small business with my wife, ripdieco.com. It is a personally hand tie-dyed and screen printed t-shirt business. Got a lot of fun designs. Right now we're running the Jack Skellington and a Pentagram right now. They're really cool. It's $21 out the door plus sales tax, whatever sales you at. No shipping, anything like that. All of our packaging is eco-friendly. It's all biodegradable. It's really cool. So if you guys want to snag one, the links are all in the description. And let's continue with the video. Thanks. Coming in at that number two spot, this one's going to be located at 43.4, 75.9. This one's going to be located underneath the floating islands. The easiest way for me to find this one is there's this really common rat hole that everybody really knows about that's like underneath the floating islands. There's like two little ledges and stuff. I'm going to show it on screen real quick. So it's just across the edge from that, and it's kind of under these like orange, like honeycomb kind of looking things. And when you go under there, it's kind of a lot similar to the last one where these two little ledges or like edges on each side and from there we just kind of build out and this is what we do now this one just like every other one i always start with a generator i always find the most like pushback little location for it just to kind of tuck it away that way it's not line of sight because when the generator goes down you've lost hope on everything else and then after that again the cords if everything isn't really well hidden and put away people are going to find the like easiest way to exploit it to kind of push it away so from here, I kind of had a hard time getting it right off the bat. But as you can see, as long as you can get off the very first one, then you're fine. Now, if you're kind of in this position like I am where it's just uneven, the best thing you can do is to get one of those flexible cables. Um, once you do get a flexible cable, what you can do is put one a little bit further in the better position that you need it to be. So kind of square it up, line it up the way you like it. Then you can take a flexible cable, connect those two points, and then you just continue to build from there. And like I said, as long as your cables are well hidden and under the ground, everything's going to work out super well for you. Now, I could have put a second joint in there if you really wanted to. And then that way it just keeps it really nice and secured. Um, you know, you don't really necessarily need cables running everywhere, but you want junction boxes and many different, actually, of those, like, physical individual cable pieces as you can because if one breaks there is a chance that maybe the other ones will still reach one of the turrets and it'll help you just kind of stay around also if you're in this area and you're going to build more you might get a chemistry bench or something like that so you just want to have that electricity kind of going everywhere that you're going to need to before you start putting those foundations then again just like everywhere else you put foundations now i probably would have if i wasn't making a video for this one sunk these foundations down a little bit if you don't know how to sink a foundation it's something that's super common it, look up a raft video from like 2015 and you'll know how to do it um, but basically you just use like a pillar to get a different snap point and keep shrinking them down if you want a video on that just let me know i don't think anyone will but you know hey just throw that out there so again, from here, I just like to put triangle foundations wherever you can. When you put things down, they can kind of lean over the edge and it's totally fine. It doesn't really matter. But if you have nothing there, then that space is just kind of like not really utilized very well. You could put vaults in some of those and vault drop it down if you wanted to. But for this build, I didn't really need to do that. So again, I usually like to start with the fabricator if you're that far along that you can do that. Just because the fabricator is big, bulky, and it's kind of a pain in the ass to kind of figure out where you're going to want to put that one. So that's usually the first one that I do. Then after that, usually the next one I do is the smithy. Um, in this case, I did the beds just because I always like to... For this one, I just really like to make sure that I keep my bed covered. Um, anytime you do that, you want to make sure that when you spawn up, you're not just going to get sniped because otherwise then... You know, that's just, again, another game over. Um, so like I said, after that, I'd like to do the smithy. Oftentimes, I like to butt it up against the fabricator. So the best way to do that is just find a way up on top of your fabricator. I, I'm a cheater because I'm in creative mode and I just flew up there. But, you know, there's a billion and one ways to get on top of a fabricator. You can run and jump if you didn't know that. But I'm just too lazy. And then from there, you know, again, I always like to keep at least one forge so you get a little metal smelting and you don't have to go travel for it. Um, but you know, again, they're bulky, they take up a lot of space, so I don't really like to deal with them too much. Um, something I'm just now realizing while I'm doing the voiceover for this is I didn't put mortar and pestles down in any of these bases, and don't ask me why I didn't, but they're small and tiny, so put them wherever you want. Don't come crying to me in the comments that I didn't put it down. And then from there, as you can see, you can at least hop back to where that smithy is, and it makes it pretty easy from there. Now, on this build, I'm definitely going to want to make sure I have a little bit of coverage in here just so with this build. Um, it's a little bit easier of a one to at least get at least a door frame down that's going to cover that bed. 
And then on this one, you can't really do a classical wall in this build, but you can definitely put some turrets to at least get yourself situated and built up so no one's going to come find you. This isn't a super common one, um, so it's going to be a little bit easier for you just to go under the radar while you're... So like I said, this one, you're not going to be able to put a traditional wall like most of the times you are. So the best thing you can do is just get some good coverage. This one's a little bit awkward because there is this one rock kind of formation that kind of blocks your way. So you want to make sure you have some kind of turret covering the up above part as well as this kind of below part. Now, the really good part about this one is there's a lot of room to expand. So once you get these few turrets that are just going to keep you, again, protected just from, you know, little player scouting for easy raids, stuff like that. It's going to keep you safe enough from that. It's not going to keep you safe from an alpha tribe, but let's be honest, if you're looking for a rat hole, you're not going to be a survive in an alpha tribe anyways. So as long as you get this blocked off from here, you can definitely expand out to a lot of different places. You can put a tower out front, which actually just gives you a lot more coverage if you want to just kind of protect this. There's a lot of other little rat holes and other really good buildable areas not too far from here. So you can also, you know, keep these all as a single like base location if you wanted to just keep everything close and tight or, you know, expand to this other ones or this could be a great one just to get started where you can you know build up to raid you know one of those kind of situations so there's a lot of good opportunities here um just again a little reminder that this is all done on those official settings so if you're official player you know this is going to work out for you because i get a lot of hate comments in some of my other ones like this isn't buildable and official why didn't you say so well all these are buildable officials so you know i hope you guys are happy so that's this one, and let's just move on to that last location, which is definitely the most unraidable rat hole on Crystal Isles. Coming in at number one, the cream of the crop, the creme de la creme. This one's going to be located at 51.1, 77.7. Now, if you can't remember that one, shame on you. Now, this one's pretty cool. I like this one. It's definitely going to be the biggest one there is. It's also one of the hardest ones to build in on official, but unofficial, you have a lot more options as well. So you can see there's just this huge area, this whole little area just right in that area is not super buildable on official you can put a couple small foundations to fit some stuff up there but this whole area is buildable and you can cliff plat the hell out of this you can make sure you put like a little shandy and stuff it makes it really defendable now to find it if you know the where dragon cave is and the floating wild uh reaper king that's always just kind of up in the sky that's a great location to kind of start out with but if you generally know where like a lot of this is, you just kind of come around here on the east side, wrap around the corner. And then as you do, you're going to kind of keep seeing these like orange honeycombs and these roots. And that is where you want to get started. So once you do come around here, like I said, this back area, unfortunately, you can't really get a good cliff plat back here, which would be like the most ideal. But, you know, it, it's OK if you really can't. Now, what's kind of really nice about this one is this is like the best one by far if you want to grow. So this first little ledge that's going to kind of be up here is a great one to get started if you just want to kind of start to put down, um, you know, like a base, a little like starter base. But like I said, out front, there's so many opportunities to put a cliff plats just for kind of the hell of it. I just kind of put a bunch down in different areas. This one right here, I am kind of placing in a more specific one because I do want to put the chandelier on that one and then as well as just kind of i'm trying to get one way up here as high as i can just to kind of show you that there is a lot of room to kind of put up different layers of here so put different layers up here um just so you can see there is going to be a ton of room once this build is kind of finished um but that's going to be later on this whole front area i'm going to kind of do as a later game build and then i'm going to also show you the beginning game build that you can kind of do that's way up here and tucked up in this really nice spot. So like any other one, I like to start. This one's not going to have the generator placement like I do. I've shown you guys that one several times this video. So you guys should be professionals by it. But I just put up some um, on this top layer. And then as you can see, you can't really snap them to it. So I just butt it up as close as I can. So it looks like a second layer that's supposed to be there, even though it's not. Um, but there's a ton of room up here. This is definitely going to be the easier one of any of them to kind of figure out where to kind of put different things. There's going to be so much room. You can easily put a fabricator up here. You can put your smithy, your chem bench, anything that you're going to really need that you even really want in that beginning game, just up in this top little corner, totally out of sight. And then the really secondary kind of nice part about this is because there is so much room, you can put vaults, you can even put a ton of forges back here. Crystal Isles is probably my favorite map by far. That's why I like on a lot of my pvp videos you kind of see me getting started there it's just because all the resources you need from you know getting element shards element from ores and stuff like that metal 
metal, silica pearls, anything you need. You got everything in just like a really small little area. So as you can see, this little starter base just worked out really, really nice. Then kind of going from there, I go to these cliff plats and the first thing I always do is kind of square up on all these like flat edges has this like middle bar. So I just line that up the best I can. And then I just put one foundation on each of those. And that's going to be where each one of the little like turret towers are going to kind of be on each individual one. So what you are going to see here is, yeah, I'm just going to snap them and then I'm going to put a pillar. And then from those pillars, I'm just going to kind of keep building down all the way down to the ground. Now, if this one's a little bit different, it's kind of cool if you can kind of cool. It's nice if you can get the pillars to actually stick in the roof, because then you're going to have multiple snap points. So even if something does get broken, some of it will still be. But from there, what you want to do, once you get all of your pillars in place, you're just going to put a ceiling. And once you get those ceilings, those are going to be all the really important parts where you're going to put the hatch frame and all your turrets. And this is what it's going to look like as soon as those turret towers are. are and this is what it's going to look like once all those turrets are up. Now, once you get a later game, or once you get all that up, you're definitely going to want to put down your gen. I'm going to kind of show you the, how I would do this if I was up in the tech gen range. So definitely always put your generators on the ground. Never put them on a foundation. The generators are a lot more tough than a foundation is. So if they blow the foundation, your generator is messed up. So never put your generator on the on the foundation. But what you can do then is, especially with triangles, this is my favorite build just so you can easily kind of get to it to still put element in. It's just kind of do this like wrap around. And then you can put three vaults around it. These vaults can always still be used because you're not going to have to like pick them up replace them, demolish them every time you need to fill, but it is going to prevent anyone from line of sighting or getting a good line of sight on it and being able to like tech rifle it as well as if they do blow those foundations, those vaults will kind of drop and it will help seal it in just a little bit more, making it again, a little bit more tricky. So it's definitely something you want to do with any gener generator placement you do, especially if you're in the tech range. Then, like I said, on these upper parts, this is going to be a perfect place to kind of start any of the tech. So if you get a replicator, there's going to be more than enough room to get a little crafting station. So you can see replicator going down, then any other crafting stations never complete unless you get some dedicated storages because they just look really nice and clean. So you do a nice little wall of dedicated storages so you can kind of keep any of the resources that you need. Plus it just looks nice, man. It's just so clean and crisp. I've been with too many tribe mates that just like dump everything in vaults and you can never find crap. And it just drives me insane. So look at, boom, super nice. It's not that expensive. You can manage it. Then again, how can you have a tech base unless you have a transmitter? Transmitters are like the number one thing I always try to go for. I'd rather have a transmitter than tech turrets personally, because you can just put yourself in really cool little rat holes and be able to move around. Then always have tech sleeping pods. If you have the ick, like you get it from leeches or whatnot, it cures that. You know, if you don't need to spam med brews in your base and your PVPing, you just go lay down in the bed, you heal yourself for a little bit. And just look at cream of the crop. It is just super clean and nice in here. Then with some of this other area, I always like to put forges and stuff because if those break, it's not the end of the world. Um, you know, I'm not going to put them in a position where they're going to break, but then you don't have to put them right next to the crafting area. Um, especially if you're in this area, just get tech gloves and tech boots and then you can just kind of punch yourself wherever you need to get going. Cool. Pants, gloves, boots. There you go. That's the combination that you want. So down here, I just put two gens or two of the... Uh, blah, blah, blah. I just put two of the forges down here. You could do a whole little crafting area with fabricators and chem benches and stuff like that just to kind of keep it going. Personally, I, I'm just not that clean of a builder. There is so much nicer of a way. Uh, there's a hatch frame. If you guys want a really clean crafting station building video, let me know. But other than that, look at this. It's super nice. You got all the turrets. You can also put pixie sticks kind of in this front to stop people from just kind of rocket running to try to get underneath some of these smaller ones, as well as putting double door frames to prevent anybody from throwing like carbs or stegos or anything a little bit too close. And then from any of these other ones, you can definitely put more chandeliers. I would definitely, on the one that I put kind of where those forges are, I put a secondary fan chandelier that covers the upper part because otherwise people will be able to like snow owl dive and kind of swoop up and kind of get into the back part of the base. And you're definitely going to want to put a couple internals there just to prevent anything like that from happening. But thank you guys so much as always for watching. If you guys like videos like this, please let me know down in the comments below, like, comment, and subscribe. Definitely go check out that merch shop at ripdieco.com. I'm also doing a PVP series on the GB7X server. So if you guys are liking that one, please go get that one a little watch and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. <laughs>